American students walk across their graduation stage wearing a graduation gown and a cap. And I was actually reading that roots itself in Muslim universities in the ninth century, where Europe's best and brightest would go to these universities and they would want to come back home and mimic the thobe and the flat cap symbolized the Qur'an as the highest form of knowledge. Even a tassel would have been the bookmark in the Qur'an, you know, for keeping your place in the Qur'an. I mean, the fact that the Islamic intellectual tradition really influenced something as common as what American kids wear, even in Europe, walking down the graduation stage, what does that say about Islam's impact on Western civilization and intellectual thought? The, the model for universities in many ways were the, were the early universities in Islam. The notion of having hostels for students. As one prominent scholar of Islam said, during the Dark Ages, if you were up on another planet and you looked down, the West was invisible. It would have been the Islamic world that stood out. And the idea that during that period, you had a fluorescence in terms of the areas of philosophy, medicine, algebra, etc., And then that was carried over into the West. And yet some of that was lost. So for example, I study Catholic theology in many venues. Very few people ever talked about the fact that Thomas Aquinas, who used to be seen as the great Catholic theologian, and his teacher were influenced by what came the philosophical tradition that then was passed on back into the West. The same thing happens when you look at areas of medicine and science and technology. Uh, and a lot of that is just beginning, I think, at a popular level um, to, to surface right now. One of your colleagues at Georgetown actually t told me once that even Thomas Jefferson was influenced by John Locke, who was influenced by the Muslim philosopher Ibn Tufayl. So why don't we learn these things in school?